In this video, I'm going to go over the new uh, text to vector graphic feature. It's basically AI generative fill in Photoshop, but in Illustrator, and it's going to create vector graphics. I'm super excited about this, so let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer. I love to teach people how to use graphic design programs and run successful stationary businesses. Um, I have a free Adobe Illustrator course that you can take if you are new here and wanting to get the basics of Adobe Illustrator. But I'm super excited about this new, it's kind of generative fill as we've done in Photoshop. You've been seeing that all over, but this is basically the Illustrator version. And it's important to understand the difference between roster and vector graphics before you dive into this. So if you're new, check out that free Illustrator course. It's going to explain all of that information. Um, it's going to help you figure that out. I have a cold today, so sorry my voice sounds weird. An important key to using this is understanding what's going to work well as a, a vector graphic and what isn't. But I find this one to be easier to edit afterward and make into exactly what you want than I find the Photoshop one. So super excited about this. I'm using Adobe Illustrator beta because right now this is still in beta. So if you go into your Creative Cloud app and you go into this app section, you will find the beta apps and you can download all the different betas and test out the new features. One important distinction is that while this is in beta, uh, you can't use any of the things that you create commercially. So you want to make sure you're following all of the AI guidelines while it's in beta, especially. So when you go to window, you'll go to text to vector graphic beta. And if this is your first time using it, it's going to show you those guidelines. The main thing is that once it's out of beta, you should be able to use anything you create in here commercially, but while it's in beta, you can't. And then even after it goes out of beta, if you did create something while it was in beta, that can't be used commercially. So you want to regenerate certain things, um, play around with it while it's in beta, but then don't use it commercially until it's after till it's out of beta. So the difference between this and like the Photoshop one is you have a few different options for what you're creating. So we have subject, scene, icon, and pattern. We're going to start with subject and that's just like a thing. We have this match active artboard style um, plug turned on. It doesn't really matter because we don't have anything on our artboard, but if you do put something on your artboard, it theoretically can match that style. We'll um, just start here and then work from there. The subject that we want to create lets you um, a bear eating a picnic. Yes, and here are those guidelines that I mentioned. The main things are that you can't train the AI, you need to be respectful and safe, authentic, you can't use other people's likenesses or any like copyrighted materials, etc. And then that commercial use, which I talked about. So while it's in beta, we can't use any of this, uh, any of these graphics commercially. Okay, so hi, we have a little bear. Um, there's a few things. It's it's very AI. Like you can tell it's like, why is this foot not filled in? But because it's a vector graphic and these are all close paths, it'd be really easy to fill in that foot and add the three little toe beans in there. So I think um, you'll see some things that are kind of weird. It's like, okay, what is this bear eating? What kind of basket is this? Um, but it would be actually really easy to fix some of these things. So these guys are pretty cute. Um, we'll play with it a little bit more. Okay, super cute. Love these. Honestly, they're very cute. This one's really cute. I love them. Um, this blanket looks a little weird. You're going to find that with AI, and you're going to find that when you kind of start to zoom in on things, it's like, that's not exactly a real type of food, but okay. Um, so a subject is just going to be subject. Right, now that we've done subject, let's try a scene. Those are always going to be like square or rectangle. We can draw a rectangle if we want it to fill that. And then let's say um, camping on a beach with a fire. All right, this is pretty cute. Um, this one is pretty cute. The sunset's a little weird. This one's adorable. Honestly, I could just put a little poster on here. My son is a little wonky, but it would be so easy to fix that. Um, these trees are coming over a little far, but it'd be super easy to fix that. And this is honestly really cute. So that's what the scene is like. Um, I find the scenes to be pretty cute in my, in my experience. Um, and then we have the icon as the third option. Let's do a flamingo. Okay. Legs are kind of weird. Pretty cute though. Again, lugs are kind of weird, but wouldn't be super hard to fix. Honestly, these are pretty cute. 
It's not bad at all. And then if we liked this one and we kind of turn on that matching active artboard style and we're going to match this and then we did like palm tree, theoretically it's going to match the style of the one that we have selected. Let's see how it does. The icons I find are a little bit simpler and I'm, I've been really impressed with them. Um, to some extent, I consider icons to be even simpler than this, uh, but it'd be really easy to get rid of uh, some of some of the detail in this very, very easily. Okay, that is very strange. This one is kind of cute. I wouldn't say it's exactly the style of that one. Um, so I do find that interesting. This one's kind of cute. Who knows? We got to just play with this. And then you can also do like change the detail in uh, your prompts by changing this detail setting. Um, but I do think, you know, for icons to me, these are already a little too detailed. So I would even turn it lower personally. And then we have patterns, which are going to take the most um, RAM. They've been stressing out my computer a little bit. So I'm just going to restart for you here. All right, the pattern ones are really fun. I like to draw a rectangle beforehand. And then every time you click on one, it adds it as a swatch to your document. You may or may not know that swatches add to like the size and functionality of your document. So if you have these kind of intense vector graphics with like lots of anchor points like these are creating and you have a bunch of swatches, it might start to slow down. So um, I hope as we get out of beta, this will change a little bit. Um, but if not, just kind of keep an eye on that because the more pattern swatches you have in your document in general, um, the more RAM it's going to take up and the harder, the larger that document's going to be. I do have a video about lowering the size of your documents in Adobe Illustrator if you want to check that out. So let's describe our pattern. What should we do? We should do like candy and fruit pattern with rainbow colors. I have found the patterns to be honestly the most fun. And I think if you're trying to generate um, kind of simple elements, like even to make your own pattern or I'm an imitation designer to make imitations or something, it's cool to do a pattern because what you'll see is it will create like several different options. Um, so we did candy and fruits. It's going to, it's going to probably create several different like candy and fruit options. And then we can like choose which ones we like or which ones are more realistic and go from there. This one is very odd actually. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, this one's kind of cute. So for instance, like the strawberry is kind of cute. The tomato is kind of cute. The banana is kind of cute. Um, this little flower inside another thing is pretty cute. They don't actually really look like um, candies to some extent. Uh, the little lemon slice is cute, but you could separate this out and use some of those elements to create your own pattern. Like this apple that's like half one color and half another color doesn't really make sense. This maybe strawberry that's just a triangle with a leaf um, doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you could take some of these elements and use them in your own creations. These kind of look like candy. We're going to try again because I'm going to delete these uh, pattern thumbnails. Let's do, let's see, um, beach, yay, palm, springs. See what we get here. Okay, so this is pretty cute. We've got some flowers, some hats, beach bag, um, what's I think supposed to be beach chairs, flip flops, palm trees, pineapples. Kind of cute. This one is also kind of cute. There's some things in here you might want to use. There's some things in here you also might want to fix. So like this is supposed to be, I think, a bathing suit, and it looks a little wonky. It looks very AI, uh, but you could kind of fix that and use that individually. So these are all kind of interesting. Um, let's try. We'll try leaves and flowers tropical pattern and see what we get. In general, I think with these, there's always gonna be something that does look really AI. It might give you the overall vibe um, of tropical something, or this one's kind of travel related that we're seeing. Uh, but there's always gonna be a little bit that you need to fix. So I think using the patterns um, and fixing them a little bit, the elements to make your own pattern is going to be really uh, the most useful version of this. This one's so cute and almost, I'm trying to think, nothing too terrible. 
right off the bat, to be honest. I don't see anything that looks absolutely terrible. We might want to separate these leaves. We might want to change this inner yellow piece to be like a circle or a recognizable shape or something, but this is honestly really cute. And these elements could be used. Okay, here we have like these orange flowers that look strange and weird, <laughs> but everything else is kind of cute. Um, so you could just do a little bit of editing there, or you could just use some of these elements and create your own kind of thing. This one's going to be cute too. These blue shapes are weird, but honestly not like totally incorrect. Um, I could see this like, you know, I could see this being cute on something. So the more you play with it, the better you're going to get, um, at using it, giving it prompts, um, having it generate based on styles of things that you already have designed or that already exist on your artboard. So I'm really excited in general about this. And I think for me, just, I work in Illustrator so much, it feels easier to change as an example, changing, this little yellow piece to be a circle or a shape more like this just feels so much easier than doing something in Photoshop where you then have to like carefully delete, remove it, change things. Um, so instead of just getting an individual pattern, you're getting vector shapes. And so all of this is going to be like expandable and usable as an individual vector shape. And I think that is the coolest part of all of this. So even if you create like a bear eating picnic and the blanket is kind of weird, it's not that hard to go in and change it. And this can give you a lot of like good ideas and get you, you know, halfway there on some shapes, which I think is going to be really the key to this, like taking the AI stuff and putting your own like human realistic spin on it. So let me know what you think about this kind of beta feature. It's called text to vector graphic. And again, you can find it in window, scroll all the way down, <laughs> text to vector graphic, and you have to use it in the beta app at this time. But by the time you're watching it, it might be out of beta. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Uh, and then you can use everything commercially as long as you're following those general AI user guidelines from Adobe. Let me know what questions you have. If you're new to Adobe and you want to learn how to use Illustrator, specifically, I create wedding invitations. So that's the spin that a lot of my content has. Um, we have a free course that will last seven days. You'll get like a 10 minute video every day directly to your inbox that will teach you how to set up files, work with fonts, shapes, draw things, um, work with colors, etc., and just like customize your entire Illustrator trader experience. So I hope you check that out. I'll link in the description for you. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video and I hope you'll stick around and watch some more.